There is something that I, I have come to understand as, my, as we grow in the Lord that most of the times what is of faith is more of action. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What is of faith is more of action. Amen. Prayer is not the books. Prayer is not the preaching. Prayer is the act. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Winning souls is not the message of winning souls. It is the act of going out to win souls. Amen. So most of the things that has to do with God, faith has to be, to be, to be part of the process. Amen. Any man who God has ever used, there was faith involved. Abraham, he was told to come out. He had to have an action of what he had to do. Praise God. Praise God. Any miracle that was ever done, faith was supposed to be involved. Amen. The woman with the issue of blood said, said to herself through faith, she said, I will touch the hem of, a garment, of his garment. If she sat in her house, nothing was going to happen. She had to open the door, come out of the house, go into the street, press until she finds the hem. I believe this is why Apostle James say faith without works is dead. Am I communicating to somebody? You need a grace. A grace. You need God to empower you. No matter what prophetic word that is upon you. If there is no force that pushes you into action. You might die carrying a prophetic word. There is a statement that I used to love that says, you cannot die in the village, yet the world is in your hands. Oh my God. Praise God. Amen. I want you to pray. Oh God, empower me. Let me do what I am supposed to do. Oh God, empower me. Let me do what I am supposed to do. Oh God, empower me. Let me do what I am supposed to do. Open up your mouth and begin to pray. Manto kapaya. Le gabrate lisko palagata. Lanto kapaya goskataya. Oh God, empower me. Oh God, empower me. Oh God, empower me. My prophecy will not die in my hands. My future I will not die in my hands. Ja Makorataya Leta Kappa Jephthah said when I saw that my brothers could not help me, I put my life in my own hands. Yakora Talabasa, my prophetic word, my destiny will not die in my hands. It 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 will not die in my hands. El Arada Bayatakaya La Gabra. Talakata, elege baragada kataya, manto kapaya gabalas kata, iratele kata la balas keta, ilendon de kataya, akara de kata la ba, lakuratele kas kataya, ilado de kayata, rateli kataya. Push me into action in the name of Jesus. Makura tele kaskaba, ligabara de katana kapaya, magaga da kayata, ilagabra tele kaskata, la rade dea, 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 igababa kawata lata, lando katambele kata, ilagabara de kataya. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout that amen like a thunder. I say shout that amen like a thunder. Shout that amen like a thunder. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter number 1 verse 18 reads this way. This charge I entrust you, meaning you are trusted. Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies, Previously made about you. Not only said, made. There are custom made prophecies. Oh God. There is a custom made destiny specifically for you, Mark. That no one else can be like you, can replace you, and try to replicate you. You are not hearing me. What makes you important in life is that there is no one with a fingerprint like you. There is no one with the blueprint of a character, destiny, and life that God wants you to. Oh, may I not come to a day 
where I am alive and heaven is saying my seat is vacant. Oh. Uh, you didn't hear me. May I never come to a day where I am walking alive and heaven is saying my seat is vacant. Yeah. Israel had a king. But in heaven, so was no longer a king. May you not be absent in your presence. Amen. May actually your presence make noise more than you. <laughs> Even your absence, may your absence speak. May, may you be noticeable that you are not there. Ah, you didn't hear, you didn't hear that. May it be noticeable when you are not around. When you are not around, may it be noticed. So he said, I charge you and I am according to the prophecies customly made for you. Listen to this. That by them you might wage a good warfare. You might wage a good warfare. You might refuse the life that is not meant to be yours. Wage a warfare. You must refuse the circumstances that are not customed for your for your for your for for, for your own for your for your own template. There are certain problems that are not custom for you. There, are, there. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? If the Bible says God will not allow any temptation that is higher than you. It, there are certain people if, if the Bible says God will not allow it means the devil tries to bring things that are not templated for you are you hearing what I'm saying Amen. are you hearing what I'm saying yes, that is why certain destiny hopers are not destiny hopers because they are not your template they are not your template why at least you have a destiny to go abroad Someone wants to sponsor you to go to Zimbabwe. <laughs> they, they, they ask you to be a helper who has a certain template for you. Amen. Oh God, by the reason of the prophetic word, may I walk in my destined path. By the reason of your prophetic word, may I walk in your destined path. Say, Father, by the reason of your prophetic word, may I walk in your prophetic path. Father, by the reason of your prophetic word, may I walk in your dest in, 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 in my destiny. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sit down if you can. Praise God. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you look awesome. No, 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 no. Shake that neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, you look awesome. You look awesome. Uh, no, no, you are not doing it right. You are not doing it right. Do it with vigor. Do it. Do it with vigor. Do it with, 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 with a, a voracious push. Neighbor, you look awesome. Let it be a declaration. If they don't feel awesome, declare it into their bones. You look awesome. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to take your Bible to so the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter number 11, verse 32. Are you ready? Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. My God. My God. So, so, someone said, every time, every time you preach and you say, are you ready? I know. <laughs> that, that day, something happened in the prayer room. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. When you hear, are you ready? It means, if you are in the plane and they tell you to put your seatbelt, it means there are turbulences that you are about to go in through. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Daniel chapter number 11 verse 32. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. Ye shall say just with flattery those who violate the covenant. Ye shall say just with what? Flattery. Those that violate the covenant. Listen to this. <laughs> but the people who know their God 
shall stand firm and take action. Amen. The people that know their God shall stand firm and take action. Look at your neighbor and say, those that know their God. Those that know their God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the things you realize as you become a believer and walking in faith, is that the walk of faith is called the walk of faith because action is required. Am I communicating to somebody here? That is why it is called the walk of faith. Worshipping God, you must have a consciousness of understanding that God is a miracle worker, not a magician. Am I communicating to somebody here? A miracle, it means above your ability, he does something something supernatural. A miracle is a place where you are trying to do a business and the profits are not enough to take you to the next level and God does something supernaturally. Am I communicating to somebody? A miracle is at a place where you are in a place where there seems to be no life but you are trying to survive and God gives you an ability a supernatural ability to survive where others say you cannot survive. Am I communicating to somebody here? Yes, I said, am I communicating to somebody here? Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you understand that as a child of God, as a child of God, while you are walking with God, one of the things you have to know more is to understand who he is, how he operates, and what is it that he wants you to be. Because the biggest problem of a lot of believers is thinking that the, the reason you are alive, you can live anyhow. You can accept anything. Accept anything in life. What, what do you want? Anything that comes, I am content. And that is not in line with scripture. Am I communicating to somebody? Oh, yes. Am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. Oh, kabarata laba. Let us go into the Bible. When you read your Bible, in the book of Job, Job chapter 22, verse number 29, the Bible says, when men say there is a casting down, we shall say there is a lifting up. When men shall say there is a casting down, we shall stand with braggadocious confidence in God and say there is a lifting up. Amen. While economies are going down, there is a certain, there is a certain sarcastic character we come with. To say it is not our portion. I hear what I'm saying. I hear what I'm saying. Jabez understood this that I cannot accept anything in life. He went to God and said, God, this territory you gave me is not enough. Enlarge it. You can anybody who lives life who lives life content with their present level will never be qualified for the next level. Unless you become uncomfortable with where you are, you can never move to the place where you are supposed to be. The reason why you are where you are, it is because you are too comfortable. Am I communicating to somebody? When I speak about being comfortable, I'm not talking about emotions. Many people are crying, Lord, my life is not what I want it to be. But hear me, when you come to a place where you are now uncomfortable, you your fasting life changes. Your prayer life changes. Your giving life changes. You come to a place where the way you begin to become so corrosive, the way you begin to become so consistent in the spirit becomes abnormal. Yes, sir. That prayer of Jabez was not just a prayer. The man was bringing petitions. I explained to us yesterday there is a difference between a prayer and a petition. There is a difference. A petition, in, in, in the world we live in, a petition, it can be a written document where people are making a petition to say we want, we want this and this to happen. 
So the more the signatures, the more the petition carries weight. Ah, you are, you are not hearing me. The more the signatures, the more the petition carries weight. So there is a dimension where somebody can get into prayer, praying for that breakthrough, and it becomes a petition. When it becomes a petition, it's not just a prayer. A prayer, you can pray it once and go. But when it's a petition, it becomes a mission. You can wake up for the next one month with one prayer point because it's a petition. You are loading it. Somebody say, I'm loading it. Amen. Until it becomes heavy. Amen. You know, Jesus speaks of a story of a widow. And the Bible says that there was a widow. It's a parable. The widow and a wicked king. And the Bible says the widow was always going to the king. Do you know what the widow was saying? Lord, avenge my matter. Oh, yes. That was a petition. So every day when the king wakes up, the woman is at the door of the palace. King, avenge my matter. The Bible says the king became tired <laughs> of this woman. The king became tired that this woman was consistently coming. Co -co avenge my matter. He said, we cannot help you today. It's okay. I will come back tomorrow. I don't know how many months did she do it. I don't know how many years did she do it. But the king said, let us settle this matter. Because it is becoming an annoying matter. She's not giving up. Amen. She's not giving up. Amen. And the Bible says, and the king granted her request. Do you know what Jesus said? And Jesus says, how much more if you can become consistent, if you can become a person who's persistent in that prayer, somebody's praying, God, I want to go to the next level until you come to a place where it becomes, it becomes your focus that you are getting into that place. It is, it might be that it is like a man called Isaac. When you read your Bible about Isaac, the Bible says, Rebecca was barren because her womb was closed. And the Bible says it this way, the version that I read, while I was 23 years, said Isaac prayed much prayer. It was not just a prayer. He, he, your, your, your King James version, when it comes to that prayer, the Bible says, and I, Isaac entreated of the Lord. The, imagine a prayer being spoken as a treaty. <laughs> God put your signature, I put my signature. It was, he entreated of the Lord. I'm coming with a treaty. Put your signature here. I'll put my signature here. Marata Laba, one of my mentors, an evangelist, at a time, his disc, his backbone discs, they slipped, so he was on a wheelchair for some months. One day, he was preaching, he was preaching and he was saying, one day, I was in my house on a wheelchair, and he said, I opened the windows of the house, and he said, I took two chairs, and when I took two chairs, I put one chair here, one chair here, I went with my wheelchair and I said, God sit here, devil sit here. I am going to stand up today. He stood up on the wheelchair till today. He's one of the greatest evangelists. Stood up on the wheelchair. He did not need a service. He did not need anyone to lay his hands. He understood that those that know their God, God sit here, Satan sit here. I'm standing today. Opened the windows. He opened the windows. If, if, if devil, you do not know how to enter because I, I, have, I have saturated the, 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 the place with defense, I'm opening the window. Because the Bible says that thief enters through the window. So, enter. We will cast you out after. I want you to witness. I want you to see faith being put into action. The man stood from the wheelchair, started standing, started walking. No need for service. When the wicked say there is a lifting up, they're casting down. We shall say there is a lifting up. Amen. 
you cannot come to a place as a child of God where you accept everything, you accept every circumstance, you accept every battle. There are battles you say, this one is not mine. I ignore. Bring something better. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, 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 <laughs> Those that know their God. So one of the things that makes a person to get to a place that we know that they know their God, the Bible says those that violate the, 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 um, that violate the covenant shall be what? He said, Jews is those that violate the, the covenant. So one of the things that makes a believer to us to know that you know your God is how you hold your covenant. How do you hold your covenant with God? And before we go on, how do you hold your covenant with God? The question must be, do you have a covenant with God? Living without a covenant is living a risky life. Because it is the covenant that protects you. A life without a covenant, Pastor T, is a life detriment of calamity, doom, and disaster. You cannot be covenantless. If you are covenantless, you are coverless. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? When Noah got to a place where he bent a sacrifice, the Bible says God saw Noah's sacrifice. And when God saw Noah's sacrifice, he says, I will never destroy again the world with water. Therefore, I will put a covenant of a rainbow. I will make a covenant with you and I will bring you a token of a rainbow. Every time that token shall appear, I will remember the covenant. So no matter how much water wants to come, when the token appears, the covenant is remembered. So imagine living life without a covenant of protection with the Lord. Without a covenant of prosperity with the Lord. Living life without a covenant of God's faithfulness. You are in trouble. You are in trouble. There has to be a sign. Am I communicating to somebody? There has to be a sign. Do you know that the issue of signs has been to a point that even in superstitions, people knew that there has to be a token for God's covenant. When we were growing up, if you wake up and your hands are each, they will say, ah, you are going to handle money. <laughs> they believed there was a connection with the itching of hands and the covenant of wealth. They believed that there is a token that if you are going to handle money today, your hands, something, something. <laughs> something must happen. The same way as a minister of the word, the same way when you feel a certain movement of the anointing, you know that today, even if there is a demon that has been hiding, we will call it from the village to come here and we will cast it. <laughs> Praise God. Those that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. They will not only be strong, they will stand firm. They cannot be moved because they are ready to do. They are ready to take action. Am I communicating to somebody here? Covenant! Men of covenant, men that know God are men of covenant. When you read your Bible, the Bible tells us of a man called Abraham. God said to Abraham, I'm giving you a token of circumcision that shall be the relationship between me and you. Every one of your generation must be circumcised for them to be part of the covenant. The Bible says there was a time when the man called David was looking at a man called Goliath and the Bible says while he was facing Goliath, the man looked at Goliath and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who dares? Ah, uh, somebody said, don't dare. Don't dare. Who dares defiles the Lord? Mm. 
oh, that one makes me, that one makes me go jiggy jiggy. Who dares defiles the Lord? Who is this? Who is this? There are, there are certain times you need to look at the situation and say, who are you? Uh -uh. You look at it and say, you, who are you? You look at your wallet, you hold it, you say, this is not allowed. Because people of covenant, hear me, men of covenant, sometimes, they don't spend time. They just go to God to remind him yeah. of the covenant. Hear me? When you reach a level where you have a covenant with God, There is no one close to me that can never die by accident because there is a covenant. Amen. There, is a, there is a covenant. Amen. I hear what I'm saying. Amen. There is a covenant. There are things, there, there, there are times you would pray and say, God, premature death is not allowed, not Amen. close to me. I remember what, one, of, one of my sons had an accident and the bus crashed and fire burning the bus. He came out. People died. He came out. Why? You can't die by accident. The covenant does not allow. Does not allow. Does not allow. So no matter how they might do incarnations of the spill blood, spill blood. Hear me, hear me. You enter, it happens. You come out, you dust yourself. You declare, katama, I shall not die. Amen. What's happening? I shall not die. Amen. It takes a person with, with, who understands covenants to have confidence. You can't have confidence if you do not have insurance. So David looks at Goliath and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? His own matter was not how big David Goliath was. Ah, six feet, whatever. That was not the issue of David. You, you might be big. You might be strong. You might be plumpy, muscular, vascular, <laughs> extra voluptual. But that was not the issue. The issue was no matter how big, even if you come with an automatic gun, the issue that there is no covenant, you are uncircumcised. What David was doing when he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Do you know what he was doing? He was calling on the God who spoke to Abraham. So that God who said, Abraham, you are my friend, appeared. <laughs> he said, I am coming to defend not only as a God. So when, when that uncircumcised was called, even the face of Abraham appeared. He said, who are you? <laughs> so Goliath was fighting, a, a, was fighting David, but he did not know that when David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He pulled down a file that was a thousand years old. He, he made the, a God with a history of successes of a thousand years to appear. Mm, let me explain this. When David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? The God who parted the Red Sea said, I am coming. <laughs> am I communicating to somebody here? The God who answered by fire said, I am coming. The God who spoke to Samuel said, I am coming. So the God of all those experiences said, because of a covenant, I am here. <laughs> so Goliath was now fighting a battle of the gods. And David had to make it worse. 
when Goliath came and said, and he began to hold his sling, rounding his, rounding his spear, and said, today, I'll beat you like a boy. David says, you come to me with a shield and a spear. He understood, David says in the book of Psalms, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but I shall trust in the name of the Lord. He's, David spoke it this way. He says, you come to me with a shield and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. What is in the name of the Lord? The Bible says in the book of Psalms, those that call upon the name of the Lord shall not be put to shame. So God was never going to allow it because David did not say I'm coming with a skill. He said, I'm coming in the name of the Lord. And David had to put a spice on it. When he spoke to Saul, he said, I know God is going to do it, but it can't be for free. What shall be given to the man who shall kill Goliath? Because me knowing the covenant, this God has to profit me. The Bible says, let your profit make known unto all men. God must profit you. <laughs> what shall be given? God, he, David sent a stone. I don't know how small it is. I know that Goliath was big, but a stone was sent, no matter how small it is. And remember, Goliath had a, 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 an armor bearer in front of him holding a shield like this. So it was not just him. There was a man in front holding a shield. The stone tactically maneuvered. <laughs> it swung and swerved. <laughs> Avoided, jammed, skipped the Amabira. And directly went on where vulnerability was. So even if the Amabira was tall, the stone jammed. If you play football, I, I won't speak names because I don't want to start a battle. There is one man who hits a free kick like this. When he hits it, it bends. Yeah. A long time ago, there was a man called Roberto Carlos. Yeah. Even if he's on the center, if he be, he's the ball, the ball would be going like this until it enters. I, I believe there was an anointing of David there because the ball would swerve like this, swerve like this, swerve like this, avoid like this, but enters. That is what David did. Threw that stone. It tactically meandered and maneuvered. <laughs> Hit on the forehead of Goliath. If I beat you now, the first thing you do, you hold your face and you fall. And most importantly, if you are hit on the forehead, you have to fall at the back. But Goliath did not fall at the back. He fell, went in front words. The, the first punishment was, you do not worship God. We will force you to bow down. Amen. The first thing was, we do not worship God. We will force you to bow down. Because David says, I come to you in the name of the Lord. So the Bible says, every knee shall bow. <laughs> bow down. Number two, the moment Goliath, David was sending the stone. Remember what the Bible says. The Bible says he speaks the end from the beginning. So God was already standing at the beginning where Goliath was. David was still at the, was at the end. David was still at the beginning. So the stone did not need to hit the man. <laughs> God was already on the finishing line. The moment the stone came close, I don't, I don't even think that stone touched Goliath. Because the Bible says, the Bible says the man fell in front. Imagine a giant. And it is with confidence that I know that what happened there, there was a five-fold ministration that happened. The stone appeared, went on the forehead, God added a slave from the back. Say, die. So, in case you, you will not die from the stone. <laughs> in case, let me add my own. Bah! The man froze on the spot. On the spot, the man froze. He was supposed to have seizures. When a stone hits you, you are supposed to have seizures. No, the man dried up on the spot. Those that know them. 
Am I communicating to somebody? Elijah was a man who knew his God. The Bible says there was a time when the armies wanted to arrest him. The Bible says Elijah stood on the mountain. He woke up in the morning and he saw the mountain was covered with armies. They were ready to attack him. They were ready to arrest him. They were ready to reprimand him. They were ready to detain him. The man said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down. The man understood who he was. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said, am I communicating to somebody here? Esther understood her God. The Bible says when Haman wanted to kill the Israelites, Esther said, let me disappear from the scene. Let me go into the office. Esther began to bring a petition to God for three days, speaking to the master. Yeah, Korakalaba. In the next three days, there was a fever that came on Esther. Her man died on the same pose that he had created. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said, am I communicating to somebody here? Those that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Many times we are believers, but we are in a place where we do not have accurate confidence in the God that we worship. Am I communicating to somebody here? We are corrupted by the system of this world. Look at your neighbor and say, I shall not be seduced by flattery. I shall stand firm because I know my God. God, because I know my God. Hear me and hear me very well. When you know your God, you know that it is a God who is undefeated. He is a God who is unlimited. Who is a God? The Bible says He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. What He did before, He can do it again. Look at your neighbor and say, Lord, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. When you know your God, people like Samson had confidence in God that Samson would take a job on in the midst of many swords, iron swords. He will beat them, bash them, smash them, thrash them, dash them with a job on. With a job on. Not just a job on these were trained soldiers. Imagine being beaten like with a job on is like being beaten with a slave. You are coming with a gun. You don't respect elders, eh? <laughs> a job on the Bible says they were beaten by job. The, the job on changed to become a weapon. I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost. Whatever that is in your hands, may God use it to change your life. Hear me? God did not need a, a, a sword to defeat the Philistines. I, I want you to catch this. God did not need a sword. He did not need a spear. Anything you see, I can use it. Hear me? Even if you sell stones, may it be... Oh, you are not hearing me. Even if you sell quarry stones, may they profit you. Amen. Ah, this scripture, this scripture moves my belly. The Bible says, the jawbone, even to, even to Moses. Because what do you have in your hands? It says, I have a stick. Say, okay, we'll use that one. That stick, that stick terrorized the whole of Egypt. One stick. I believe in their secret corners, they were discussing to say that stick. If we can only so if even 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 Moses, I believe when he sleeps, he would sleep holding that because everybody wanted the stick. There is a way. That very same thing that looks normal on you, that gift that looks normal on you, that ability that you have that looks normal, may the Lord empower it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you know that there are certain people, all of us are keeping hair. There are certain people that their hair is paying them. For people to touch their hair like this, you, you pay. <laughs> all of us keep hair, but <laughs> somebody got empowered the hair. That everyone wants to wants them to advertise their product. You are not catching it. There is a, there is a power in covenant that makes small things to be amplified. 
You see an advert only nails and someone is paid thousands for only bringing out their nails. And you're wondering what happened. There is a certain spirit that when it comes on a man, there are certain covenants that when they are on a person, you are not limited by natural occurrences. Am I communicating to somebody here? Those that know their God. Those that know their God. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. You cannot live this life anyhow. You cannot live this life with a, 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 an attitude that is anyhow. Am I communicating to somebody here? When you look at your finances, the connection to your finances must not be based on how you work. It must be based on your covenant. Am I communicating to somebody here? There was a man in the Bible. The Bible called him Hezekiah. The Bible says that the, the, the prophet came to him and said, you are about to the Bible says Hezekiah head that is about to die. He says there is something that I know. There are things that I did with the Lord. I have a covenant. Let me entreat the Lord. The Bible says when the prophet left, Hezekiah went into his bedroom chamber, looked at the wall. I believe when he was looking at the wall, he was looking at the works he had done and said, Lord, remember my record. Hear me. God sent a prophet. God resent the prophet. If, if you have never gotten to a place where you believe that the, the, the will can be changed, this is evidence. There is evidence in the Bible that wills were changed. A mega major prophet was sent to prophesy. And the man of God said, okay, it is fine. He went into prayer. God, remember my records. And God had to ask, what do you want? <laughs> there, are, there are few people in the Bible who God granted them a what do you want kind of a prayer. The first was Solomon after he sacrificed, or oh, it was a thousand bulls in the mountain. And the Bible says after he sacrificed, he went to sleep and God came in the dream. Came out wearing his Adidas shirt. Who is it? It's God. We are sleeping. Don't disturb. Who is it? I said it's God. Why are you disturbing me? I'm the king. Until he had to appear, say, oh, it's, it's, it's God. And God said, what do you want me to do for you? And says, I want wisdom. And God said, we will add to your prayer point. Hear me? <laughs> God added to his prayer point. Say, it's not enough. For we ought not how to pray by the spirit in the city. That's for us. The groanings that cannot be uttered. There is a point you must reach where you have a covenant with God. What will make you to be bold is understanding what you have. What, what, the covenant you have made with God in the secret place. There are people that will tell you, I can never be sick. You can never be sick. Why? Because there, there are things that I have done with God. Prayers I have done. Sacrifices I have given to God. That by assurance I can never be sick. Am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. I said, am I communicating to somebody? Amen. So imagine the man say, <laughs> Job said, when men shall say there is a casting down, we shall say there is a lifting up. When the enemy raises like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up the standard. And by that time, the enemy is in full force. <laughs> and you are rising like an elevator. They are wondering what, what kind of what kind of a what kind of a human being is this? That the flood of financial depression is coming, and the person is just elevating like this automatically elevating. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Until we get to that place where we can have that 
total dependency on God. Until we can get to that place where we, where we understand how we walk with God. Men like Philip may come to a place where they will disappear and appear because they knew their God. Apostle Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Why was Apostle Paul saying that when you know God, it will not be by superstition. That is why Paul would stand and say, I am fully persuaded, not convinced, persuaded that he who has begun a good thing in me is faithful and just to accomplish it. Why? He knew his God. That God will not do a half-baked project. If he starts something, you finish it. How can you start a business? You say you start with God and it does not finish. It's impossible. If you start with God, it will finish with God. And if God says it is not yet finished, you will not go anywhere. I say, if you start with God, you will finish with God. And if God says you are not going anywhere, you will not go anywhere. God can remove everyone for you to continue what you are doing. Your camera. You hear me? When you contend with a man with a covenant, you, you, your own finishing is not normal. Because you are now fighting a spiritual battle. Men with covenants do not have time to fight. Men with covenant do not have time to debate. If you read your Bible, in the book of Exodus 12, the Bible tells us in Exodus 12 about, about uh, Aaron, Miriam, and Moses. Miriam Moses went and married an Ethiopian woman. Obviously, the whole of the Bible is, 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 is three quarters it's in Africa. It happened in Africa. So Miriam saw this and said, how can you marry an Ethiopian woman? <laughs> She's not part of that other group. So how can you? It is God who in Deuteronomy said you must not marry people of the other culture. And God was doing it because people from different cultures had a tendency that they worshipped other gods. So the same thing that you saw happening to Solomon that he became more confused because the more you marry, he married different women, all of them were coming with their gods. So Solomon's household, Solomon's household, had more churches than the ones that, <laughs> that are in your location. Because on every Sunday service, every woman with a, with a finished life. That is why Ahab sold Israel in those days when Elijah came and said, if God be God, let him answer by fire. And he slaughtered there is a word that I'm seeing. There is a word that I heard you say, hey, it's now a, an anthem in this church. What's that word that you use? Obliterate. <laughs> Elijah obliterated the prophets of Baal <laughs> in the mountain. Obliterated, eliminated, annihilated, erased, massacred, the prophets of Baal. Do you know why? Because when Ahab married Jezebel, Jezebel came with her belief. So God said to Moses, no, you will not marry of another religion. The whole of Israel. Moses went and married from Ethiopia. Because that's, that is where people, most in Ethiopia, it is said that they knew God first. That's why the Ethiopian eunuch did not understand the Bible, but still, he was walking with a scroll. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. The Bible says they stood and they began to debate with him. I, I think they even wanted to remove him from the throne. Say you. And the Bible says God, Moses did not debate with them. While this, while this, while this, they, 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 were, they, they, they had come out, they were in the temple. God said, is there another prophet like Moses? I speak to your prophets and visions and dreams, but this one. What was speaking to them was not the office of Moses. What was speaking to them was a covenant. God was defending a covenant. 
That is why the Bible says, to your prophets, I speak to them through visions and dreams. Do you know what that means? What God was telling them is that this one is not a prophet. All of you are prophets, you prophesy, but this one, his own office is called Moses, not prophet. <laughs> he has a covenant. He has a covenant. That, that makes you to live beyond human superstition. Am I communicating to somebody? A covenant. A covenant. What made David not to get to a place where he would, he, he would have defeat in life was because he had a covenant. It started with a lion and a bear. It went to Goliath. Do you know that every battle that David fought, more than 36 battles, all of them, he won them. All of them, he won them. Because the men had the covenant. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> he prepares the table before me and my enemies. He had the covenant of understanding the Lord is my shield and my buckler. Who is man that I can fear? He had the covenant. A thousand shall fall on my side. Ten thousand on my right side. It shall not come near me. He had a covenant. No arrow that flies by day shall smite me. So no matter you send an arrow, it cannot hit him. He had a covenant. He had a covenant. He had a covenant. He had a covenant. I was reading a scripture yesterday in the book of Psalms where David was saying, help me, O oh God, and do not delay. Such a man, such a man. <laughs> help me, O oh Lord, and do not delay. I think it's around 30 there. 31 or 32. Do not delay. Imagine telling God, say, I, I need your help, but on this one, don't delay. <laughs> The, if, when you read the Psalms, there is, there is something you understand that David understood covenant. He understood covenant. He understood covenant. When you look at your finances, when you look at your finances, my God, let, let's go to the book of Psalms. Kabaraskata. Lebaskota namahadekiaba. My God. Shabreta likaskada. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My good God. Pereda litakaya. Praise God. So, when you read your Bible, you, you understand that David understood how to speak to God. David understood how God operates. David understood how God was on his side. When you read in Psalms 28, David says, the Lord is my, sh is my strength and my shield. To you I call my rock. Do not be deaf, lest if you be silent to me. I be, my God, I will not go down the pit. Look at the person, I will not go down the pit. Look at the person, I will not go down the pit. In Psalms 27, the Bible, the Bible says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I fear? No, it does not matter you have a you have chest. <laughs> Imagine standing in front of a person with a chest <laughs> and they are pushing and say, you say, the Lord is my shield and my light. <laughs> Who shall I fear? <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He says, Who shall I be afraid of? When things seem tight and you decree, in the, in the book of Psalms, the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The earth is the what? Lord. And the fullness thereof. And the fullness thereof. We are going to pray today. Hallelujah. We are going to pray today. If you read it, that is in the book of Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. How will you be a person with a covenant? Understanding that everything belongs to God, and you get to a place where you can be stranded in a playground that was created by your father, it's impossible. It's impossible. Someone you command, 
Someone you command. To, today I came to plug you, to, to electrify you, for you to understand the, 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 the God you serve. Once you begin to know him, those that know their God, there is a time you do not need a lot of scripture. Ah, you stand. I know my God. I know my God. The Lord is my shield and my buckler. Who is men that I can fear? You'll be looking at your enemy and you'll be declaring and declaring. The Lord said, the Lord declared, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. You stand and you declare. The Lord tells me, he leads me in righteousness path for his name's sake. Once you begin to know your God, you can stand like Peter. Peter looked at them and the Bible says that the Lord touched his tongue. He began to speak to kings and the Bible says they said to him, don't speak about Jesus again. He says, it's better I die. He understood his God. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they were told who put you into the fire but they knew there was a God from the time of Abraham from even before the time of Abraham they knew there was a God who was alive. They said send us into the fire. There is a God that we know. The Bible says the men entered into the fire. They were they put them into the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego throw them, three of them, into the fire. The Bible says the fire was increased seven times. Those that threw them died on the door. The Bible says they entered into a vacation. They were in a, 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 a sunny vacation. While these people were watching, people were watching. It was like, the, the finish was like a playground. So people were watching. And the Bible says, suddenly while they were in there, there was a fourth man that appeared. Ayeka Baru's Kataya. There was a fourth man that appeared. Why he is called God? He says, Call upon me and I will answer. There was a fourth man that appeared. The Bible says, Those that call upon his name, they shall not be put to shame. A fourth man appeared. The king looked and says, Who is that? There seems to be a fourth man. He looks like the son of God. Am I talking to somebody here? Daniel was thrown into the den of lions. He became the, the, the lion of Teranka. He became the he became the lion of the tribe of Judah. While he was in the land, he dominated and humbled them. Hunger dried from the bellies of lions. Why? Because a person with a covenant and knew their God had entered. Daniel entered into the land of Babylon as a slave. He ended as a vice president. Joseph entered into Egypt as a slave. He ended as a prime minister. Those that know their God in a time when Job had leprosy. I believe a person with leprosy has nothing more to wish for. Job stood and says, but I know that my redeemer liveth. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said, am I communicating to somebody here? There is somebody under the sound of my voice. You are going through a situation where you are asking yourself questions. How will I overcome this? You are going through a situation. You are saying, Lord, I'm getting old. I need to settle. You are saying, Lord, my business has been years. No profit. Hear me and hear me very well. There has to be an expected end. God said to Jeremiah, before I know you in your mother's womb, I predestined you to be a prophet to the nations. God said to Jeremiah, that my plans are not to harm you but they are to prosper you and to give an expected end I want you to look at your neighbor and say there is an expected end there is an expected end there is an expected end you can't you, you can't be under an atmosphere of egos and die like a chicken. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said, am I communicating to somebody here? I said, am I communicating to somebody here? You can't die anyhow. You can't live anyhow. You can't survive anyhow. There is a way you need to look at your finances. I said, this is not the way a child of God must survive. There is a time you need to look at your health. I said, this is not the way a child of God must survive. Am I communicating to somebody here? Shout fire. Shout fire! Shout fire! Yeah, 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 yeah. 
there is a, there is a certain life you must not allow yourself to live. It does not matter where you are. There is something you carry. Put me in a desert, I will build a city. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said, am I communicating with somebody here? You cannot be a child of God and be clueless. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. Esther entered, is, Esther entered that land of King Ahasuerus as, a, as a, an orphan and a housemaid. She ended up a queen. It was a covenant. It was a covenant. It was a covenant. It was a covenant. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name that is above every other name. May the covenant keeping God be faithful in your life. I say may the covenant keeping God be faithful in your life. In whatever business you are doing, in whatever adventure you are doing, in whatever thing that you are handling with your hands, may God appear. I say may God appear. I say may God appear. I say may God appear. The same God that when Peter had told all night Jesus came and said cast your nets into the deep and fish wanted to break the net a net breaking miracle may God appear I say may God appear I say may God appear the same God that a man called Zacchaeus Zachariah they were barren for long and then an angel appeared and said you carry a child called Jonah may God appear I say may God appear the same God that Haggai was at a place where the child was about to die because of this they were in a desert there was no supply there was no connection nobody to help them and God said ah guy I am supplying look at your right she saw a well that God that apostle Paul says my God shall provide all your needs I say may God appear 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 at a time where you feel that this is the end of your life. At a time where you feel that this is the end of your destiny. The Bible says Samson was in that position where Samson was blinded, eyes removed, eyes gashed out, eyes plugged out. And the Bible says that he was on the pillars and he prayed a prayer. Give me one more chance. Hear me child of God. I know you tried to fail but that is not the end of life because you are still alive God has to do something again there is a prayer in the book of Zachariah Zachariah prays it this way I love the prayer Zachariah said God we have heard about you how you delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt we have heard about you how you parted the Red Sea revive your works in my days take that testimony that happened to Abraham take that testimony that happened to Sarah. Take that testimony that happened to Daniel and say, Lord, revive your works in my days. Revive your works in my days. Not for somebody, for me. Let them be revived. I cannot continue being stranded. Yet God is God. Revive your works in my days. I cannot have financial dryness. Yet God is still alive. The same thing you did for that widow. You multiplied the oil. Revive your works in my days. Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody here? Shout, I hear, I hear. The same way Mephibosheth was hidden in Lodiba. Nobody knew him. Everybody had forgotten him. But somewhere, somehow, the Lord God of heaven made sure that he put the name of Mephibosheth in the mind of a king. That Mephibosheth being where he was, the king could not rest. The king could not sleep. The king could not sleep. And God said in the early morning when the king woke up, he said someone may feel bullshit. I want him at the king's table. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said am I communicating to somebody here? May that same God answer you. May that same God remember you. May he put your name in the mind of those that can change your life. May he put your name. May he put into thought people that can change your life in 24 hours. May they hear about you. I said, may they hear about you. I said, may they hear about 
you is a echo it I put it as a prayer over your life may angels carry your name to the right place may angels carry your name to the right place may angels carry your name to the right offices in the name of Jesus Angels are carrying your name. Angels are carrying your name. Child of God, when you read your Bible, you realize, I love it when the Bible openly speaks about something that is strange that happened in the Bible. Hear me, God can make you to be remembered. Am I communicating to somebody here? Where, where, the, where the wise men were to where Jesus was born is about two and a half years. So they started walking they started walking before even the angel came to Mary and said you carry a child may God prepare where you are supposed to be before you appear may the people that are supposed to come to a place oh, kabaraka kalatama, ento kapaya katalaba, the people that are supposed to be blessing you in June may the Lord put them in place now in July may the people that are supposed to be a blessing to you be put in the right place am I communicating to somebody am I communicating to somebody in the month of August in the month of September in the month of no no October in the month of November in the month of December before you appear may the stage be set before you appear may your sponsors be available before you appear may your business partners be available in the name of Jesus somebody you are coming out of this place loaded you might not feel it it does not need a feeling but in the spirit there is a making up that is happening am I communicating to somebody here there is something God is orchestrating in the spirit there is an uncommon favor you are carrying that is you are going to be walking around when they look at you all they want is to favor you I say all they want is to favor you whatever you are doing with your hands I decree may the Lord increase you ten times more I said, may the Lord increase you 10 times more. That business, that career you are doing, may the Lord increase you 10 times more. Every door that has been closed, I command it to be opened. I command it to be opened. I command it to be opened. Your career door, your ministry door, your business door, your promotion door, be opened. Be opened. Be opened. Be opened. Be opened, be opened, be opened, be opened, gates of influence, be opened, be opened, be opened, be opened, in the name of Jesus. You are coming from the back side to the front side. I don't care where you are coming from. I don't care what, what they call your family. I don't care the limitations in your household. What I know is that there is a seed of God in you. And that seed can, cannot be overcome by the world. There is a seed in you. Greater is he. You can't carry something great and die small. You can't carry something great and die small. Whatever, 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 whatever kind of demonic consultation they do against your life by the power of the Holy Ghost I decree and I declare it shall not work in the name of Jesus Amen. when Balaam was about to curse them the Bible says the Lord would just touch his tongue and he would bless wherever they are wherever they are any office they enter trying to speak anyhow God shall touch their tongue am I communicating to somebody here they shall hear me some who enter into offices trying to report you but it shall be like the story of a man called Bartimaeus. The more they shut him up, Jesus was saying, who are you shutting up? Bring him closer. Are you, you are not hearing me. The more they were saying, keep quiet. Jesus said, who is it that you are trying to keep quiet? Bring him here. May the Lord favor you in the midst of opposition. May God use your enemies to be a bridge to your next level. Praise God. Praise God. May God torment your tormentors. Hallelujah. Amen. Stand up on your feet. I want us to pray this prayer. 
I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to pray this prayer. What will make you to be different is grace and favor. Oh God. Oh God. May your grace and favor be seen in my life. Ru, when grace, grace and favor is on you, grace is, grace is what makes you to be, it's called unmerited. Grace makes you to qualify where you are not qualified. Amen. Favor. Oh, favor makes you, hear me, favor is divine desirability. Favor is divine likability. Favor is divine attractability. Favor. Oh, yeah, Kabaras Kataya. Favor is the savor that brings sweetness to your labor. Favor. Favor. I decree from today, may you operate in grace and favor. May you operate in grace and favor. Whatever you touch, I speak grace and favor. On your feet, wherever you walk, may your footsteps be grace and favor. Grace and favor. Grace and favor. In the name of Jesus. Every part of your body, I decree grace and favor. Every time you speak, I speak grace and favor. Every environment you enter, I speak grace and favor. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. From today, your greeting shall be grace and favor. Amen. When they say, how are you? You say, I am graced and favored. Amen. And when they say, how are you? You say, grace and favor. Your response shall be grace and favor. Am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. The Bible says, time to favor Zion is now. Grace and favor. Grace and favor. When you look right, let there be favor. When you look left, let there be grace. Where you do not look qualified, let grace appear. Let grace appear. Grace is that thing that makes people to cancel certain vettings. And they say we just put a grace period. We just put a grace. Ah, let's, 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 let's put this law aside. That is what grace does. Grace exempts you from interrogation. Grace. Where when you apply, they accept because of grace. Oh, may favor shine on your face. I say may favor shine on your face. Whatever you touch, the Lord shall be seen as God. In the name and the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your name because you are God. Your Bible says those that know him shall be strong. They shall stand and they shall do exploits. They shall take action. Lord, I pray mighty God in the name and the blood of Jesus. We are coming out of this place as a force. We are coming out of this place unbreakable, unmovable in the name and the blood of Jesus. We are coming out of this place with a force that is to be reckoned. In every sphere of influence and whatever we do, we stand and we decree and declare, we will make impact. Wherever you shall go, you will leave your footprints and they shall remember you. Your, your, your absence shall be louder and your presence shall be impact. For. Your absence shall be louder and your presence shall be impactful. Your absence shall be noticeable and your presence shall be impactful. I decree and I declare that which I has not seen, nor ear had, nor is it even be conceived by men. May the Lord God do it for you. I say, may the Lord God do 
it for you. What has never been done in your family, what has never been seen in your family, I put it into your hands in the name of Jesus. I charge you the same way Paul charged Timothy right now. I charge you to your destiny. I charge you to your destiny from today. Go and prosper. Go and multiply. Go and increase. Go and be elevated. Go and establish. Go and make money. Go and make quality relationships. In the name of Jesus, wherever you enter, it's every place that is supposed to be a place of lifting up. I declare doors are opened. I command that door that will change your life in a day be thou opened may you begin to sit in offices that matter may offices of delegates that matter be opened I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost you are carrying influence from this place I say you are carrying influence from this place in the name of Jesus thank you Holy Ghost the blessing of the Lord is resting upon them the blessing of the Lord is resting upon them. In the name of Jesus. My God, put your hand over your head. Father, I pray. In the name and the blood of Jesus. Your Bible declares. That thou anoints my head with oil. And my cup overflows. I pray that the oil of the Lord rest upon their heads. They shall not be dry. They shall not be dry. The oil of gladness. The oil of a new season. Fresh oil. The oil that enables wealth. Mighty God. As they are laying their hands on their heads. I decree. I decree. A crown of favor. A crown of influence. A crown of multiplication. A crown of dominance. May it rest upon them in the name of Jesus. You shall not fail. You shall not fail. From today, may doors be opened on every side. May doors be opened on every side. May doors be opened on every side. Your eyes are being opened spiritually in the realm of wisdom, in the realm of understanding, in the realm of finances, in the realm of life. I command your eyes to be opened to the realm of God's glory. In Jesus' mighty name, your ears are opened. May anything, any information that has to do with your lifting up by the power of the Holy Ghost, may the Lord open your ears. May you hear it. Any information that has to do with your next level, any information that has to do with your promotion, your ears are opened. And may you hear about it. In Jesus' name, somebody celebrate God in the name of Jesus.